Hey, what's up guys? This is Dan from Guitar From The Heart. Today, I wanna do a quick video on stacking thirds. Um, I've done some work on this channel already teaching this topic, but I figured I would do something exclusively for this particular concept to make it a little clearer. Let's go to the pen and paper, shall we? All right, here we go. Today we're gonna to talk about stacking thirds and let's do a quick drawing. Disclaimer, <laughs> I'm not a professional artist. All right, does that look clear? Good enough. One, two, three, right? Get a good shot for our thumbnail, right? Today's lesson is going to be on stacking thirds. First of all, let's talk about a concept. Just reviewing again, what is a third? I'm going to assume you're a complete newbie here. So basically, what we're gonna say is basically it's any note that's two notes away from whatever note you're on right now. Get back there. Right, so a third is any note that's two notes away from the note you're on right now. So what do I mean by this? Let's go, let's take an example. So if you're, if you have the major scale, it has scale degrees, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one again. Say if you're in a key of G, that would be G, A, right? And it would be these notes. Right? Suppose you happen to be on your guitar, la 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 la, playing. You're on your guitar, having fun with it. Right? Having fun with that. And you're playing a C. This happens to be the fourth note of the G major scale. You're playing a C. Suppose you want to play a third, the third from C. So this is when I said any note that's two notes away from where you are right now. Where are we right now? We're on C, right? Two notes away, not counting the C, would be either E, or if you go this way, A. This is what we would call a third above the note we're on. All right, whereas here, the A is a third below. All right, just basics here, guys. Now, This is the concept of a third, or it's what we call an interval. So like this interval is a third. So if we're on the note C, a third away is E, or if you're going down A, you just say one, two, three, or one, two, three, like that. Suppose instead, if we were starting on, uh, instead we were starting on A, let's not do A, let's do D. 
Say you're on D right now. You're, you're on your guitar having fun with that. And you're on D and you want to go a third away, you would say D. That's one away, two away. But we count this as the first note, one, two, three. So this becomes the third. So the third from D is F sharp. Going down, we say one, two, three, the third below would be B. Okay, so this is a basic concept of what is a third. There are all kinds of intervals. We have seconds, which is a one note away, fourths are um, three notes away, etc. Going all the way to like sevenths and ninths, etc. Now today we're talking about stacking thirds, right? So what do we mean? So suppose you take any note. Say you take the note D and you want to find what's a third above or below D. You can't just say that. You need to know what key you're in. What key am I in? If I'm in the key of C, it has these notes. A third would be F, right? Third above. Because so usually we talk, when we talk about thirds, we talk about what's a third above where we are, okay? Especially when, with regards to stacking thirds and building uh, chords out. If we're in the key of, key of D, we have these notes. Notice the key of D has different notes than the key of C. Key of C has no sharps or flats. Key of D has uh, two sharps. So a third in the key of C, a third above D would be F. In the key of D, third above uh, D is F sharp. Okay, so it's totally dependent on what key you're in. Let's make a note there. So we say, what is a third? above D, we have to say, well, it depends on what key you're in. In the first place, right? It depends on what key you're in. So that being established, we always need to know what key we're, um, we're in. Now getting back to the main meat of this video, start stacking thirds. We're talking about stacking thirds. So if we have, let's suppose now we're in a different key, we're in a key of A. Key of A, we can get the notes that are in the key of A by doing a whole step, a whole step, a half step. A whole step, a whole step, another whole step, and then a half step. That's using whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This is what gives us the major scale intervals. The in major scale intervals are always what gonna give us, if we start on any given note, it's gonna give us the notes of that key. Right, so that establishes the notes of the key. Now we have the key of A here. And say in the key of A, we want to know what's a third above B. We would start with B. And to get the third, say one, two, three. So the note we're on, I'm going to say the note you're on. Right, like I said here, right, this is the note you're on, right? Whatever note you're on right now is going to determine what's the third. So, like right now, we're on B, a third above it, we're going to say B, C, D. In the key of A, a third above B is going to be D. 
Okay, so from the from the perspective of this note, we're gonna say this is the first note and this is the third note. Now, what is stacking thirds? What is this whole stacking thirds business? Well, right now we took the note B and we took the third above it. We stacked the third above, if we stack, put the third above it, we just stacked one third on top. But what you can do now is come from here and say, well, starting now from this note, D is the third of B. It's the third note above B in this key of A. What's gonna be, if we look at D now, what's gonna be the third of D? So we come here, we say D, one, two, three. The third above D is gonna be F sharp. Okay, so looking at B, we said a third above it is D. Now looking at D, a third above it, a third above D, it depends on what note you're on, right? Right now we're on D, a third of it is gonna be F sharp, and that's the third, like if we call this the one that we're on now, this is the third of D. But the way we count it when we're building out chords is we say, well, we're starting with B and we're gonna say, from the perspective of B, this is the one, two, three, that's our third, four, five, this is gonna be our five. So this basically forms the B chord that's in the key of A major. This is the one, it's the three, and it's the five from the perspective of this chord. This is, uh, the D is a third above B, and then the F sharp is a third above D. And this is how we build a chord. By coming over here, we put this third on top. So we have B, a third we put on, on top, and then a third above D, we put that on top. So we stacked them, we stacked the thirds. I said this was gonna be a quick video, but I feel like it's not that quick. Just like here, this is our first note. This would be a third above it. And then we stacked another third on top. We stacked thirds. You could go even farther and say from F, what's the next third? It's gonna be A. But from the perspective of B, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could stack that on top again, okay? Now suppose, and this was what we would use to form a chord. We use, we stack thirds to form a chord. Now let me go to that one other concept real quick. Now if you go into, and I can't believe I'm doing this right now because I don't really like reading sheet music and stuff, but honestly I can. Basically, what we would do, if we were in the key of A, let me see how bad my theory is still here with this. Basically, we would do our key signature, something like this. Something like that. The C, the C and this is not a lesson on how to read at all, but basically where the notes are is these are made we're indicating that those notes are sharp, C, F, and G. Now, if I were to write these notes on a staff, on a musical staff, it would be something like this. B would be here. Then when I write the D, it would be here. Then when I write the F sharp, it would be here. And then when I do A, it would be somewhere up here, right? So, look at that. When you write it on a musical, on sheet music, it looks like you're stacking the notes on top of each other. And that's where this stacking thirds term, it, like 
why it's called stacking thirds comes from. Now, all right, I just wanted to, to show you that just so you understand where stacking thirds come from. Just like these notes are stacked here, right? Where just like you would stack kids blocks, you're stacking the notes on top of each other on a musical staff. Or you could write it like this, the same way, it's the same thing. But all it means is that you take a note, you find a third above it, find a third above that, and you can keep going theoretically infinitely. But this is just how we would find the chord that comes from this note of the scale. What if we started with this note? So we could say the note we're on is D, and then a third above it would be F sharp. From here to here is a third. And then from the next third, we have to start here. This is now the note we're on. And we say one, two, three, and the A is a third above that. So from here to here is another third. But the fifth from it's the fifth away from D. And if we stack them on top of each other, these give us the notes that form the chord from the fourth degree of the major scale. So I don't want to go into all of this. We know um, from previous videos that I've done, if you want to review that, uh, I would suggest the, the video on the harmonized uh, major scale in every key. I show how we can derive, basically you can figure out whatever uh, notes are in any key and then the chords and how we harmonize it. But this is how we actually stack the thirds, right? And we we can eventually come to the uh, conclusion that the the one chord, the four chord, the five chord are major, the two, the three, and the six are minor, and the seventh is diminished, right? But this is how we would stack thirds. Hope that helps. Again, if you like the videos, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, let me know what you need help with. Uh, if there's any way I can help, I'm very glad. But uh, here's your theory to help you to understand some of the basics. And remember to play the guitar from your heart. And of course, as always, have fun with that. Take care, guys.